Hello everyone, I'm home. Welcome back to my channel. Well, this fall weather's got me excited, creative, busy, energetic, all that stuff. So let's just get right into this long and rambling video full of randomness. So it's cold and dreary and rainy today. Look at that, the little bit of orange leaves on the tree. They're starting. Anyway, I know it's a hurricane down in Florida and the southern states, and we don't have any reason to complain about this weather. It's fine. But I filmed my video, this today's video, yesterday, and it was all finished and complete. And then I got up real early this morning and decided to run out to my shop and piddle around a little bit. And I ended up cleaning a little and decorating for fall and Christmas. And I took some pictures. I'm going to share that with you guys at the end of this video. And then once I get it all cleaned up, I'm going to take you guys on a big tour of the whole shop. So we're going to have fun today just despite this cold and dreary weather. And I hope everybody down south is safe. And I have a friend that lives down there and they've evacuated and it's kind of scary. So hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Well, you know how I like to sit on my porch every morning and watch the birds. I'm going to start every day trying to take pictures of the progression of the fall leaves. I've been out here the last couple of mornings and already seen a change. So these are the leftovers from the flea market. They're sitting on my porch. So I decided it's the most beautiful day today. I'm going to clean up my porch, get rid of some of the scraggly little plants that aren't doing as well as they were. The cold is starting to get to them. So I got rid of those, and these are a few of the things I had left over from the flea market and had to find a place for them. So I'm just going to decorate my porch today and clean it up. So I got rid of the cobwebs, and I'm on to my porch. Now, several years ago, I was driving along the road, and I found this old dresser along the road. And it was in great shape. It was beautiful. And I think this was about 25 years ago because my boys weren't even born yet. And I ended up using this as a changing table. I painted it like a linen color and I antiqued it a little bit and I decoupaged a picture of a rabbit in the middle of it. Now this top just sits right on top. It's made out of three or four boards and it just sits there. It's never been attached. And there's a little board underneath it that's like from side to side real tight so that when you put it on the top of the dresser it does hold on tight but it just sits there. So I've had this dresser as the boys' changing table. Then it was in our hallway in our other house and just held things. This, these are the original handles, which there are only two. And I put these handles on because I just happened to have a bag of these handles, which enabled us to open the drawer. But someday I'm going to get real handles for all of it. But this dresser has just held everything, and I started decoupaging a rooster on it one day and antiqued it a little more, and it's just held all of our stuff. We, it's never been a, a piece of furniture that held clothes. It just held old pictures and photo albums and papers and old checks and the things we keep that we have to hide. Now, this is the rug on my porch. It's one of those just indoor-outdoor rugs. I call it the Velcro rug because it holds on to every little leaf and, and stick. But I cleaned it up. I even ran the sweeper over it, and I put it back on the porch, and I put that dresser out on the porch. I've decided that that dresser has seen better days, but it's still sturdy and strong. And if the wind and the rain and all the stuff... Now, we do have a covered porch. Tears it up. It's time. It was free. We've used it and used it. I put it between my two chairs, which I'm those cushions I'm going to cover soon with some kind of fall fabric. And then I started decorating it. Plus, I thought I could use the drawers to hold all this stuff when I put them away for fall. This is one of my little ivy plants, and that's one of those pumpkins with the stick that you can just stick it down in something. And this is a little birdhouse, kind of reminds me of a schoolhouse a dear friend of mine gave me many years ago. I keep it on my covered porch so that the weather doesn't tear it up. And that pumpkin is one of those that has the pumpkin face on the other side. I just turn it around until Halloween. And there's my little rusty wrought iron candle holder. And this is a little thrifted lighted candle that I've decided to put over by the door on my school desk so it won't stay here. And then I dug around in my thrifted lamp collection in the barn and found this little, oh, it's about an 8 or 10 inch lamp. And I will change the lampshade to something more fall-like. And that's the little wrought iron piece that was on my school desk. I just tucked it up on the windowsill so that it wouldn't fall over. It's real heavy. 
And I put a little another little wrought iron birdhouse here. I'm just kind of playing around, and I just love that tag. That's a tag that was left over from my flea market from one of my old postcards. I love my tags. And this little rug, it's a leftover from a long time ago. It used to be in my kitchen. It's been on the porch for a long time. It's faded. It's a little... It, I don't know if it's going to stay. I haven't decided yet, but I hate to throw it away because it's sturdy. Then I put this all on my little school desk right as you go in the door and put my little light and I did change it and I put a wax bulb in that bulb and it looks real pretty lit up at night now you know how I'm always manifesting and I've been doing it for years well I always love tables and chairs that have legs like this this is off the internet just to show you guys what I'm talking about and this is another these are desks and I just love those kind of legs so this little desk or little table spoke to me when I saw it at the estate sale for $5 because it had those curvy legs. And of course, I showed you this little thrifted end table I bought recently, and it's got those kind of legs. I didn't realize I had so much stuff with curvy legs. This is the little desk that my husband got me at the flea market for free when the guy didn't want to carry it home in the truck in the rain. And then I even noticed my coffee table. Even though their legs are only 8 or 10 inches tall, they're curvy. So... You know, when I saw this at the thrift store the other day for 10 bucks, I had to have it. It was wobbly. It, I, I'm so bad at taking pictures beforehand. This is after I started working on it, and I should have taken a picture when it was just all brown so you could have seen it, but I always do that. I get excited to clean it up and work on it. Well, this little desk was, they told me that someone dropped it off and they don't take donations of furniture anymore, so they had it right by the door for 10 bucks, and I grabbed it. The top was scratched badly. The legs were very wobbly. But before I even got it out of my truck, I, I tightened the bolts on the bottom of the legs, and they're, it's sturdy as it can be. So I dry brushed it with some white linen chalk paint. And then, I, well, of course I cleaned it up first. And then I sanded this part, and I decided to paint it the mushroomy green, a little orange, a little blue, a little brown. A little bit of everything and it had two little drawers on the front and I love the way the handles look so I left those alone and I just kept doing my paint technique it, it was a rainy day and I sat in the garage by myself and I painted some roses and some vines on it and this is after I put the final coat of um, antiquing on but this was my inspiration I had seen this on the internet over three thousand dollars and it's just a painted table it's not a desk but I kind of got my idea, and of course I love green, and it goes with everything in my house. And they had painted the bottom part of this and left the top part brown, or natural wood. I did just the opposite. I painted the top part, the surface part, green with the painted flowers, and then left the bottom part brown, which you'll see here in a minute. But... This is a hand-painted piece for over $3,000, and I don't think that I would ever pay that even if I was wealthy. I just wouldn't. I, I get a thrill out of finding thrifted stuff that I can redo in an afternoon, and that's exactly what I did. So here you can see my technique on the top where I left the legs, the natural wood, and I just sanded them and restained them. I didn't refinish them. I just stained them because I liked all the little nicks and everything in them. And this is what the surface of the desk looked like. It was a, a mess. <laughs> and after I painted mine, I scratched with sandpaper, scratched some of the finish off. And I just love the way it turned out. It crackled in a few places, and it, it blended so well together when I put the coat of varnish on it. I used um, the Minwex Golden Oak. And it took a couple of days for that to dry and quit stinking, but oh, I absolutely love it. I, I had a hard time finding a place for it, and it ended up going next to my husband's chair in our living room as you're getting ready to go downstairs. And then I had fun decorating it. I pulled all kinds of things from my house and just put different things on it until I got it the way I wanted it to look. And, of course, I have all kinds of little thrifted lamps and my dried roses, and I just love the way it looks. It's You'll never find another one like it. That's what I like about my stuff. No one's going to find my stuff because... I do all my own. Anyway, I put all kinds of little decorations on it and changed it around, and I love it. I am going to find a new handle for it. I don't like that knob on the front. It has a little drawer, and I am going to line the inside with pretty paper. 
But it went from this inspiration, which I saw on the internet, and I've seen many inspirational pieces in magazines, to this, a thrifted $10 piece that I painted and scratched up and dented and sturdied up the legs, to a piece that is unique and special to me. I'll always remember how I worked on this that rainy afternoon out in the garage and got so much joy out of it. I listened to my favorite podcasts while I was doing it, and I just loved it. And I don't think it's a piece from like the 30s or 40s. I think it's probably from the 60s or 70s. But it's vintage, it's beautiful, and I love it. And I don't think I would ever take $500 for it. I'll love having it in my house for hopefully years to come and I will change that knob and the, I don't care for that at all but yep I really like it and I did a happy dance when I was done I told my husband I said oh my gosh it's so beautiful and then we're thinking about going on a little beach trip in a few weeks for our son's 24th birthday but of course with the weather the way it is all of our plans have kind of been dismissed so I was shopping one day in the thrift store and I found this beautiful, lightweight, teal colored leopard print shirt. It has little gold and brown flecks in it. It's just absolutely beautiful. Found it on the 99 cent rack and I thought it would look really cute with white pants. And then I found this vintage dress. It's really long. It goes a little bit past your knees. It's not quite a maxi. And then the arms of it were just beautiful the sleeves I thought they were so pretty I put some roses with it with a little hair tie thinking you know if I was out on the beach I could pull my hair back and it'd still look like fall and my husband wanted me to tell you all that he bought me five fine pieces of jewelry recently at the CVS bin close to the cash register <laughs> We were in there picking up a prescription one day, and I said, oh my gosh, look at these, they're 99 cents. And he said, well, get all you want. <laughs> and he, I picked out five pieces, and I could have picked out a lot more, but gosh knows I don't need jewelry. But these were 99 cents a piece, and they're lightweight. I, they'll probably turn me green, I don't know. But I saw this one, and I thought that'd be a pretty beachy colored bracelet. And I had so much fun going through that bin. I found these earrings that had the aqua colored beads and these gold earrings, which are, are light as a feather. <laughs> but when you travel, you know, you, you lose your jewelry or I've left jewelry behind. I've left it in the hotel and I don't want to lose something good. Not that I have a lot of good. I bought these several years ago in Florida and I just absolutely love them. They're real lightweight and I wore them all the time. And one of them finally broke. So I found these at Walmart that I love. <laughs> and I wear them all the time. But I like lightweight jewelry. So I was tickled to find these others. And then I thrifted these many, many years ago for probably a quarter. And I just love them. I wear them all the time. I'm just trying to tell you that you don't have to have la di -da jewelry all the time. A few nice pieces are nice. These are thrifted. And the more tarnished these big ones, these earrings get, the better. And then this blingy ring, it's one of my favorite bling rings. And I got it at Rockville at the dime store for $2. I'm not kidding, guys. And it, it looks like diamonds. I'm not kidding. People are always saying, oh, my gosh. And I might be fooling myself. But this one is from a jewelry company that I'm going to talk to you guys about soon. I'm going to do like a reveal of another ring that I just ordered from them. It's one of those companies where they use like white topaz and white sapphires. And the, to me, I wear it every single day, that one in the middle. And the one on the right is a real diamond. And I hardly ever wear it. And those others are the 99 cent cheap earrings. But look what happened to my diamond ring. The diamonds have fallen out of that ring. The whole cluster fell off one time. It's broken two or three times. <laughs> and this ring I bought from the other company is like a diamond ring. And I wear it every day. I've worn it for three or four years now. And I've had no problems with it. And of course my bling bracelets, they'll be going on my trip as well. And I know Elizabeth Taylor said one time when she traveled or she went to someplace important, she wore her fake jewelry and left her diamonds in a lockbox. And I thought, well, what's the point of having diamonds if you're going to lock them up and wear fake stuff? So anyway, I started working on some miniatures this week. This is an old cookie tray that's seen better days. And 
this pie I think is going to be pumpkin pie. You're going to see a little display that I'm working on. This is my sedum plant out front. And if you look at it really close, these are the little miniature individual blooms. And I think they look like rose petals, rosebuds, whatever you want to call them, for a little miniature bouquet. And when I was making my little miniature roadside stand several years ago, I used those for my mums. And this is the regular color of the pink. And then some of them I painted gold and orange and yellow. And they I still have them and they look like realistic mums. They're just beautiful. And then I started working on some miniature scrapbooks. Um, I have some orders to fill. So I sat down and made five or six of those. This shows a little piece of scrap that I'm going to put on one of them. When I'm doing this kind of stuff, guys, I'm in heaven. I love to sit at the table or at my desk with a light and some tweezers and some glue and some paper, all kinds of stuff. And I love to look at just different little scrappy pieces out of magazines and catalogs that I can use for my pieces. This is where I, uh, I crinkle up the paper and I fold it up so that it looks old. These are miniature postcards. I shrunk down the pictures of some of my postcards. They're about a three-fourths of an inch long. And you know how I love my apples book that I set on my counter every fall? Well, I found a picture of it in a magazine the other day, so I made a miniature one. Now, the spine I will paint black to match the rest of the book, but I'm holding it down with a pair of scissors here because it's full of pages. And then I always fold my pages in on the edge so that it looks like a real book. And this is another little book I saw in the magazine. I cut the little picture out. An Apple book. I go through, well, now Marge Clark's book. Now, I used a packing tape on her book because Marge's book is shiny and slick. So, I don't usually do that. I like my books being more matte finished. But I wanted it to look like Marge's book. And here they are with salt shakers sitting on top of them, holding them together while the glue dries so that they don't fly open. And I fill each one of them with about 20 pages. And then this is the little scrapbook. Now I'll antique it and I will ruffle up the pages even more. So they'll go from looking like this to little decorated books. And they'll be filled with recipes and cards and bookmarks just like this little book that I made for myself. And I'll be shipping those out real soon and I'll show you what they look like. So I have a penchant for these little cardboard reproductions of paintings and I found that one that had the yellow trees and I decided to paint them orange and make it more fall and I've got all kinds of frames I'm going to have to put it in a pretty frame and hang it up but it just turned out beautiful and I gave it a light coat of golden oak stain as well and it turned out just the way I wanted it so my husband the day that I went to the flea market, he went to Planet Fitness by himself, and he stopped at the lady's house that always has the estate sale. And when he got out of the car, he said the yard was full of stuff. And he said, babe, when I got out of that car, she said, everything's free. Get it out of here. I want it gone. And he got me some stuff. He got me this Moon and Stars spooner that I love. I put it on the counter. It's real heavy. You know how I like to put my spoons and my forks in spooners. He got me several books. He knows what I like, but he, he just picked up a quilt book, a flower book, gardening, and Tuscany. And he got me this big meat platter that's ironstone, and it's Johnson Brothers, and it's beautiful. And I had just taken all this stuff to the flea market to get rid of it, and I come home, and he's got a truckload of stuff. My friend Sherry found me that bittersweet along the road we have a hard time finding bittersweet these days and as i'm taking pictures of my soap and everything in that platter i notice this little pic, pic not picture this little plate that's kind of tucked back there and out in my store the other day i noticed i had a bowl that had the same pattern on it sometimes i forget what i have and as i'm going through magazines looking for em ephemera to put in my little books i saw this bowl a rose bowl and I zeroed in on it. This very bowl was sitting on my table with flowers in it, and it's the same pattern. So I probably touched that bowl in that magazine a few times and manifested it. So we ended that beautiful weekend after all that miniature making and fun stuff with a big old hearty bowl of vegetable soup. It was so great. Okay, wait, there's more. I got up. I had this video finished. 
I got up this morning and I went out to my store. It was dreary and rainy and cold. And I thought I need to dust, knock down some cobwebs <laughs> and clean and take down some decorations that were outdated. And I needed to spruce it up a little bit. Now, this is a picture before I got to clean in too good. And this is what I walked into after the flea market that day. My nephew helped me unload everything, and I had taken this table for display, and we didn't have any place to put it, so we set it on top of another table. That's what I do. I stack tables on top of tables and put stuff on it and hope no one knocks into it. But if they do, they do. And I kind of went around. These fall decorations were already up, but they had some cobwebs, so I cleaned those up a little bit. And I just kind of walked around my shop and really looked at things a little deeper because... We had taken so much out for the flea market that I had some holes and I had some spaces and I needed to rearrange a little bit. So I kind of walked around and looked at everything really good to see if I had any Christmas stuff poking out or an Easter bunny or something like that. And I started seeing things I forgot I had. I forgot that I had several plates and dishes and I started me a box of stuff to take back in the house. Here's some Christmas stuff that I got out. It's about time to go ahead and start putting that out. And I found this, guys. I'd forgotten I had this. You know, my two marigold carnival glass dishes I've recently gotten for my coffee table. Well, here I had this one in my shop and didn't even realize it. It's smaller. And I really think on my coffee table I need three instead of two. It evens out better. But I got to looking at this one and... I put it on my coffee table already, guys. I know my coffee table looks so wild, but in person, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but there it is sitting in the back there, and I think having three on the table is better than two. It's more like a collection, and this celery dish will be on my coffee table forever. It's my favorite. I never take it off, but like I said, I just kind of tucked it in here and there and tried to figure out there's some empty space on this end of my coffee table right here guys so see I can put more on there and I'll fill them with candy when it gets closer to Halloween and my kids are home but this bowl has like the grapes and the ivy and it's just beautiful and it's probably about eight inches across and so I put it on my coffee table and I enjoy it I know it's a lot, but then I got to looking at the bottom of it, and I think it's flash painted. I think it's more like from the 70s or 80s. I don't think it's real vintage, but I don't care. I love it, and it makes me happy, and here's my coffee table before I put all that carnival glass on there, and it looks probably better to you guys because it's more plain, but I'm not a minimalist. I'm a maximalist, I think is how you say it, and this was a couple of falls ago, and then this is an old picture, and oh well, enough of my coffee table. You guys have seen it. So I'm back in my store, and I noticed that I have a lot of wooden bowls and a lot of fruit. I have this plate that I think I've shown you before. I had it for sale, and I'm thinking, should I bring that in the house? And then again, the moon and stars on this candy dish is so pretty for fall, but I left it out there. I thought this will be pretty in the spring to bring into the house. I just go shop my store. I take things out of it and take them in the house. And I forget what I have, actually. And then, of course, I have a lot of the Betty Crocker cookbooks. They sell really well. So whenever I find them, I get them. This will look pretty in my window at kitchen, in my kitchen window in the spring. I need to sell stuff, too. And then I saw this pretty tidbit tray, which I loved, and I'd really never looked at it before, but inside the pictures, I think it's the courting couple. I'm going to have to ask Jeffrey Kevin of Decorating Happily Ever After, because he has those dishes, and I'm wondering if it's the courting couple that's in this little tidbit tray, but it's just beautiful, and I'd really never looked at it before. This big soup tureen I recently saw in an antique store for $54, and I think I've got it marked for 12 I don't know. I thrifted it somewhere, and somebody will get a good deal for 12 bucks. And then I was noticing this little cupboard had glass handles. I never noticed that before. I thought they were wood. And these are some flowers that hang from the ceiling around my ceiling light that's made out of a hula hoop with garland and Christmas lights around it. And I noticed I had some little bingo cards that Sherry gave me kind of tucked into a basket. Just things I hadn't noticed before. And then I saw this fruit plate that should be inside my house. And I thought, what's it doing out here? But I'll probably bring it in in the spring if I don't sell it. And there's another fruit plate. 
I've sold a lot of fruit plates, and I hate to think of the ones that I've sold. I'll probably, well, I don't miss them because I don't remember them. And my tags. I love my little tags. You guys know how much I love them. I thought this one was sweet. I've reproduced this one a few times. It's three little girls. It's so Victorian looking. Things, Little things like this just give me such a thrill. I can't even tell you. Can you tell that I keep busy? <laughs> this is me when I was a baby. I made several tags with my picture on them. And then I saw this gravy boat out there, and I collect those, so I don't know what it's doing out there. I love hand-turned pottery, handmade things, and this one is really pretty, and it's real heavy, and I put some fall flowers in it, and I think I've got it sold. And like I said, I'm like Cracker Barrel. I hang things from the ceiling, <laughs> and you know, you just never know what you're going to find when you come into my shop. It's just the things I take to flea markets and my overflow and all the things that... I love to tinker with. I go out there and just putter around, move things, redecorate. I did start putting a few touches of Christmas out because this time of year, I think people are starting to think about Christmas. So I put some of my little vintage stockings and my primitive stuff, and I just had a blast. I was only out there for a couple of hours, but I had it, it's relaxing. I, I just kind of get lost in it. And there's my little stoneware salt glazed ornaments that I've got to be making because people are ordering in ordering them and these little wooden stockings I've sold so many of those I can't even tell you so I need to get in my workshop that's behind my shop in our barn and get to working on all that stuff the little salt glazed ornaments I sell them in a set of six and when you get orders for them you got to sit down and make them and sometimes when I have orders it kind of makes me have anxiety that I'm not going to get them done. So I went in and painted the first coat on them the other day, and I've got those all done. All I've got to do is paint the cobalt part on. And I just went around my shop and cleaned and dusted and just kind of spruced everything up. I thought I'd show you guys, and I will take you on a tour. My friend Kim wants me to take you on a video tour of how I built the shop and what it all looks like, and I will do that. It was just fun remember, and I pulled this out of a cabinet I forgot I had. And then I saw this fruit picture, which is something I would love to have in my house, but the frame isn't real pretty. So I'm going to look for a better frame and take it inside. And I thought this was a cute little vintage print, probably from the 50s. So I will take you guys on a tour of my store. This is out front. I have a little cabinet out front, and I put things in it that I don't care if they get wet. And... Then we're talking about miniatures. I, you know, I think the reason I love miniatures is because I can create little buildings and rooms of places that I would like to live in. You know, I have so many ideas in my head of different places I'd like to have. Like, you know, I'd like to have a beach house. I'd like to have a summertime cabin, a wintertime cabin, a mansion, <laughs> all this stuff. Here's a Christmas cabin. When I do miniatures, I can have all that stuff. This is a little table with books and a little cup. And, of course, a fireplace is always important in one of my places. So I think that's what my miniature making is all about. And I hope you guys don't get bored with it. But I've got a project coming up. And I've got to tell you the story about the EP. You know who I'm talking about. Project that didn't come to be. And it's coming. So I've got to tell you that in the next video. And I've got so much stuff to show you guys in the next video. You won't believe it. I just, this one's dragging on and showing you so much, but it's so random. This is a plate I thrifted a few weeks ago. It's beautiful. It's got a real pretty soft celery green background. And as you can see, I, I'm a tucker. I just tucked it back behind a bouquet of flowers on a shelf and you can barely see it, but I can see it. Then I'm in the thrift store the other day and I saw this and I thought, Marcy, you don't need another plate with roses on it. And I thought it would be expensive. So I was going to pass on it. And good thing I turned it over and really looked at it because somebody had put hot glue to pop tab on it. I don't think I would trust that to hold my beautiful plate. But good thing I turned it over because it was 50 cents. I threw that thing in my cart so fast. And it's got this beautiful soft green edge on it with all the pretty little engravings and the beautiful roses that kind of look like the roses in my mom's lamp that I've shown you before. Now I set this in my china cabinet to show you what it'll look like this spring when I get it out with all my rose plates. But I really love it. 
and my friend Sherry gave me a baggie full of little miniature pumpkins and said, here, can you use these? Well, of course I can. Look at those darling little pumpkins. I'm going to paint some faces on some of them. I'm going to use them to decorate in this project that I'm doing. I laid a couple of my miniature books on it so you can see how tiny they are, and I'm just going to love it. And these are the seeds I've been gathering we're going to have lots of seeds. I sent some out this morning, and I'm going to send some more out Monday. And you guys will be getting your seeds, the ones that ask for them. And the magazines that I'm going to promote right now are Vintage Cottage. The Cottage Journal magazines are always good, and the Country French. If you like my style and how I decorate, you get these magazines, and you'll get all kinds of ideas. And, of course, any Victoria magazine, I get them all. I push them. I love them. So, I just hope you guys are enjoying these early days of fall. October is going to be here, what, in a couple days? And it's just unbelievable that the year has gone so fast. And I did fall videos last year. And these hydrangeas are still going strong. I don't even have to redo them because they're from last year. I tucked some pretties in with them. But I just want you guys to enjoy every single day. We lost somebody recently, a friend of ours, and you just have to enjoy every day and take in as much beauty as you can. Um, follow me on Instagram, see what I'm doing there. I'm so full of ideas right now, I'm scaring myself. <laughs> so if you can leave a comment and a thumbs up, you'll help me so much. And as always, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. And we're going to grow and grow and grow. And I promise I'll never run out of ideas to share with you all. I love you guys all so very much.